Hi, in this lesson we're going to look at the topography of place and how that's constructed in a poem. To understand the Irish tradition of Dinchantius, to explore language and dialectal choices, to study how specific meaning is crafted, and to notice how Heaney shifts the focus and creates significance. We will reflect on his use of viewpoint, deconstruct and understand the nature of that recounting so that we can explore how memory of time and place is crafted, but also how it constructs poetic voice and consider his viewpoint. Before we start though, let's think of people whom you've loved dearly and recollect the things that they say or do that are perhaps trivial in themselves, but which are special to you. How valued are those memories? Spend a few moments reflecting on that idea. Make a short list of the most endearing but trivial things about people you know that are sentimentally important to you, even only in memory. For example, my grandfather always used to butter the end of the loaf of bread before cutting off the slice. So now we're going to turn to Bro by Seamus Heaney. As you can see in the map, Mossbourne is identified by the picture and the arrow, which is just around the corner from Anna Horish, the primary school he attended. And Broch, the village, is identified where the circle is, the river bank. And you can see that in the picture on the right where Heaney overlooks the river bank, and the whole thing is located on the red dot in the map of Northern Ireland. Here is a picture of the village today, so it's still quite a small community. Broch, riverbank, the long rigs ending in broad docking and a canopied pad down to the ford. The garden mould bruised easily. The shower gathering in your heel mark was the black O in Broch its low tattoo among the windy burr trees and rhubarb blades ended almost suddenly, like that last <sighs> the strangers found difficult to manage. If we look at the poem for a second, we can see how the dialect, the local words used only in that region, um, have been adopted by Heaney. So we have bro from the Gaelic Bruch, meaning a river blank. And we can see here Heaney standing by the same river bank, reflecting on what it was, what it is to him. The rigs are the furrows, whether in the fields or leading up to it. The docken, the Scots and archaic English plural for dock leaves. The pad, the path that he walks down, covered over with trees and foliage. The tattoo, the drumming of the falling rain. And the boar trees, the elderflower, the elderberry. So all of these are included to create a sense of the place. And then at the end, he focuses on the last syllable of broch a sound particular to the local area a glottal a bit like the loch or the german ich broch here's a school photograph of heaney from 1951-52 and we can see him there in the back row at his local primary school School at Anahorish appears in another of his poems, My Place of Clear Water, the first hill in the world where springs washed into the shiny grass and darkened cobbles in the bed of the lane. Anahorish, soft gradient of consonant, vowel meadow, after image of lamps swung through the yards on winter evenings with pails and barrows those mound dwellers go waist deep in mist to break the light ice 
at wells and dung hills. I recommend you find the recording by Lisa Hannigan from the album At Swim. And by looking at this, we can consider the Dinshanchas, the law, the mystery, the, the myth of the place. It comes from an Irish word meaning topography, the landscape of the word. And so by telling the tales, you construct a myth around the name of it to explain its significance, its story, its history, its culture. And in doing that in Anahorish, and here in the poem that we've been looking at, Broch, we see the significance of these places and all that they mean to Seamus Heaney. So Heaney and his wife visit Broer, they walk down to the river bank, they walk past furrows and the path to the ford, it's raining. Marie steps into the mould and makes a small O with her heel, that fills with water, the rain drums on the leaves and the shower ends suddenly. That is the reality, that is what happened and that is what is being recounted in the memory. So we have a series of fairly trivial events that centre on Broch, a small village by the river bank. But what is its significance? We know it was an important place where his maternal grandparents lived. We know that when the flax dam festered there in his youth, the smell permeated the landscape for miles. We know that he takes his beloved Marie there to walk. So Broch is at the heart of his life, at the heart of his consciousness. It is the part of the bedrock of who he is. But more than this, the language, the very phonemes, define and identify Heaney. If you look at what is highlighted in yellow here, Heaney includes the things identified in the nouns of what is seen, felt and heard he creates the senses of the place in riverbank, rigs, the canopied pad, mould, the shower, the black heel mark and the noise of rain. These are simply listed in noun phrases in stanza one. The events shown in the verbs are minimal, but the action of the narrative appears in stanza two with the bruising of the mould and the water that gathers in the heel mark. So the significant act is Marie's presence in the landscape and what she does at the place. Heaney places her linguistically and poetically at the centre of Bro. The third and final stanzas are more reflective and here we see the significance. It is not just Marie's presence though. It is the mythic making of folklore the Dinshanchas of Broch from Heaney. It is, it is significant because the place unites the locals in a shared culture and it places Marie at that centre. Socially and politically, it excludes the foreigners or the British who cannot even say it. The poem has been seen as a movement by Heaney to embrace the dialect of local language and to show the unity of locals, both Catholic and Protestant, in his community who share these words in the face of intruding British. Structurally, Heaney breaks the poem into four stanzas, a creation of place, the events that are memorialised, and then the reflective resonance that adds poetic and mythic value. However, after the initial noun phrases, there is only one long sentence. And the poem moves fluently through the enjambement after the shower falls and crosses from the black O smoothly into Broch. 
the lines ran on, only pausing for the caesura of easily and suddenly. The two adverbs create more fluidity of sound and understanding. The realisation of the black O links to the title in that the poem is at once placed in the reality of Broch and also poetically about Broch. As Harold Bloom has said, the pastness of, and lostness of the experience itself is itself dissolved in the joy of creativity. So the floating signifier Broch becomes both the place and the poem, the memory and the significance. Once more, Heaney uses many more short vowels to evoke the memory of Riverbank, Riggs, Dockan, Canopied Pad and the black in the O among the windy trees of the place. The scene is picked out in the impressionistic use of plosives that define the landscape in a topography of sound. But the cadence of the first stanzas drops like the path as he moves down to the river. So it ends in Dokken, Pad, Ford. This contrasts with the vowels that are used to reflect the episode, as in Ford, Mold, Shower, Heel Mark, O, Bro, Tattoo, Boar Trees. Almost every line, except the last, which adds a little tension in the difficulty of managing. Note too the deictic pronoun of that in like that last ch. The last ch pointing back to the syllable in the title, back to the word, back to the culture, which creates the solidarity of speech and culture. So, in a very short poem, Heaney has taken the name of a place, the word, constructed ideas around a memory, around the name of that place, to explore the law of it, the dinshanchas, the topography of place and name and culture.